Hey, you doing? Duff here. This is a impromptu video. Um, but some people might find it interesting. Probably a very narrow subset of uh, YouTube might find this interesting. But what I have here is um, another 3D uh, electric unicycle stand. Uh, this, this stand was designed by Matthias. Um, I'll put a link to it on Thingiverse to um, the, the plan that he made. And I printed, wow, I bet I printed seven or eight of these at this time. I just gave one to Katie for her new M10 III on Christmas. So I had to print out another one and I did it in this cool uh, orange filament. This is um, this is Esun, Esun uh, filament, PLA. And uh, the way that I print it out is I, on my CR10, I'm able to print, let's see, how does it go? Something like this. I'm able to print uh, first these three pieces and then I have to just print this up the other stand by itself. So that's the way I print it all together. It probably takes me a while, I don't know, um, 20 hours of printing, 24 hours of printing. It's, it takes a while because these are these are very dense. You don't want to use uh, light infill on this because you want it to be strong. So it's printed um, with, with a high infill percentage. Uh, so anyways, once it comes off the printer, um, I print it with a skirt, so I have to remove the skirt. Um, there's a little bit of support material in the cross braces here. Um, this one I've already cleaned up. This one I still need to uh, clean that up. You see in here and in here, this is support material. So what I usually do is I just kind of take my little stubby uh, needle nose and wedge it in there and pop out the stuff on the inside. It took me a while to come up with a, a solid technique of doing this, but I've done so many now kind of figured out what was the best way. And I do the same thing here on the end. I'm just kind of popping it in both sides and then just prying it out. Okay, so there, you'll see you have a nice clean hole and uh, you just do the same thing to the other side. And also there is some, like uh, some support material that has to be removed from this as well. Or just like, well, I shouldn't say that really. There's a couple little pieces that you'll, that'll, that'll break off um, from the bottom and the, and the sides. So once you have all of the support material out of the cross brace, next thing I do is I insert some lock, uh, lock, lock nuts. Now I'm in the United States, so uh, a lot of our stuff is imperial. So these are quarter inch, number 20 thread, uh, nylon lock nuts. If you look on Matthias's Thingiverse entry for this uh, project, the nuts and washers that he lists, I don't remember the exact sizes, but they're a little bit smaller than this. So what happens is when you insert these, uh, the nuts that he has listed into here, um, unless you jam like a flat end screwdriver in here, when you go to tighten it, it wants to spin. It's kind of a pain. With these washers, it's a very, very snug fit. So snug that I, I kind of have to get it started. And then I use this pliers to press it into place and that still won't get it seated all the way. Once it's pressed into place, I take my, uh, again, my same needle nose and I just stick it inside the center of the, of the nut just so it looks dead center. I just, I just slide it down whichever, whichever direction it needs to go until it's lined up dead center in the hole. So once that is the case, you're ready to start screwing it together. And I have quarter inch, number 20 thread, inch and a quarter uh, machine screws that I use and these fit those nuts perfectly they're the perfect um, length and once you tighten these up it really really snugs things up so let me uh, let me finish this up quick and show you what the, what the final product looks like time lapse go Okay, we're done. 
Um, one thing I didn't mention was the, um, you might have seen it, but the uh, the screws that I got, they are a tapered head. And that, that works good because Matthias has this, this uh, end of the side support um, beveled out so a tapered head fits in there perfectly. Got a nice flush fit. And uh, this is your end, up, end result. A do it yourself 3D printed electric unicycle stand. This thing's uh, surprisingly strong. I, I even have my 60 pound monster sitting on one of these uh, for the last couple months and it's been fine. It hasn't been a problem whatsoever. So, um, And I've used it on all sorts of wheels ranging in size from an in-motion V5F all the way down to my 10 inch M10 III. Um, it, it works with an ACM. This was originally designed for an ACM. It works for my M Super. So um, there's a very good probability that if you have an electric unicycle this will work. And uh, it does a really nice job of uh, keeping your wheels organized and then taking up minimal space. So if you have more than one. Or even if you have one, it's cool just to get it off the floor and not leaning against the wall. So anyways, this is something I actually want to cover for a little while. Just uh, popped in my head to get it done um, tonight since I had another one to put together. And like I said, I'll put the link to this plan on Thingiverse. And big thanks to Matthias from for designing this. He's uh, He's really a talented young man, and uh, he's done all sorts of cool things. He's helped me out multiple times, and I look forward to him uh, contributing to the, both the 3D printing and the electric unicycle community for many years to come. Um, that's it. Hope everybody had a great Christmas. And uh, Katie did love her wheel, by the way, her M103. She was very, very happy. Very happy. So, anyways, hope you had a great Christmas and uh, an upcoming Happy New Year. And until next time, stuff may not.